Hello, Ivy Podcast listeners. Welcome to another episode of the Ivy Podcast. Like always, we thank you guys for tuning in and spending some time with us. I am your host, Angela Alberti. And if you have a chance to listen to any of the podcasts that I've done before, then you know we are all about the workforce ecosystem, the human capital space, all the intricacies that are involved with putting the people to work around the globe. And that's certainly the case in today's episode. I'm joined by Daniel Callahan. Daniel, give us a quick intro on yourself and let the listeners know a little bit more about who you are. Hi, Angela, and welcome to, to all the listeners. Uh, lovely to be here. Um, as just mentioned, obviously, my name's Daniel. I am CEO and one of three founders of a business called Verimark. Uh, Verimark is a global pre-employment and background screening company. Uh, ultimately, it's our mission to help the world trust faster, and we've done that through building a better verification engine uh, for global employment checks. Uh, and then secondly, by ultimately turning those verified data points into digital credentials that the candidates can then own and reuse. Uh, personally, I've been in the world of HR tech for about a dozen years, or, or maybe a little bit longer, um, having built a global high-end freelance marketplace um, as, my, as my first venture. Um, that's still running uh, and was a sort of pioneer in, in the early high-end white-collar gig worker space. Uh, and then uh, had a brief stint in corporate life before building Veramark, running the corporate ventures and digital innovation um, across APAC for the world's largest recruitment company, uh, the ADECO Group. Nice. Wow. Uh, really cool background that you have. And certainly uh, I'd love to hear that moment in your career timeline where you said, you know what? or perhaps one of many different co-founders that you were with, what was that inception point where you guys decided to take the leap and start Verimark? How did that really find itself into your career path? Uh, so Verimark is, is really an interesting one. Uh, as, as I mentioned earlier, so my first business, I set up straight out of business school. Uh, it was for high-end white collar independent consultants. Uh, akin to businesses in, in the US like Catalan or Business Talent Group, if, if your listeners are, are familiar with those. Uh, we were placing freelancers into management consultancies and, and private equity funds all over the world. They needed to do lots of background checks. And, uh, and that process was really already back then and, and still uh, in many cases for other suppliers, really painful, slow and analog uh, in how those checks were being done. And obviously as the growing world of gig economy uh, and independent workers and portfolios, the frequency with which those checks needed to be done, you know, was, was ever increasing. Uh, and then when I moved to ADECO, you know, we saw that that pain point actually, you know, was, was very true at high volume recruitment companies. And again, you still had these big delays, really poor candidate experience uh, coming through for both blue collars and white collar workers. And we knew therefore very quickly that there was this, this real sense of dissatisfaction uh, in, in, in the current service or status quo of how people were getting these checks done. And, you know, after, after two years in corporate life, I got, you know, had the entrepreneurial bug again. So I decided to, uh, you know, leave that and go and join the team, two, two great co-founders at Verimark to, to see, you know, if, if we could ultimately save that problem of how do we, how do we help people get a greater level of confidence and security around who they're bringing onto their, their team. And, uh, and that, that was really the, the view there. I mean, we were all founders. We were all, well, the three of us had all been founders before. We'd all hired people. We all knew it was a real you know, pain point that we'd experienced, not only just in the process, but also the, you know, the aftermath. If you don't get it wrong or you haven't done the references correctly and you end up hiring someone who's, who's not quite where they or who they said they were. Uh, and you know, that was a pain point we thought was worth, worth solving. And you are so right about the pain point. I mean, my gosh, whether you are the intermediary or, or the buyer or the person in HR or a corporate TA department with a high influx of, of uh, requisitions out there to fill, there is such a critical element to the pre-screening process. I mean, I can't tell you how many times you've got the perfect candidate, they're actively interviewing at other places, and then you go through this cycle of, okay, time to do your background checks now. and, and and there's just this delay of, of information to get back. And it really can make or break uh, the successful placement process for many folks out there. And I, and I know that if you are in the workforce ecosystem yourself and you're listening into this, 
you've carried that sentiment, you've been part of that process, and you know how critical it really is through the overall life cycle of of talent and talent deployment. So a super effective strategy needs to be done in place to make sure that all is executed well. Um, and, and you know, for the intermediary, even more so, the staffing agency that really is depending on this uh, result to be driven uh, in the nick of time is, is super important to what they do every single day. Uh, so tell me a little bit about, you know, this conceptualization that you guys have with Veramark. And I thought it was fascinating when you were walking through some of the blockchain technology elements that you have looked to leverage. Now, knowing that pay, maybe people that are listening into this call aren't blockchain experts, can you break it down for us and how you've applied some of those fundamentals into your overall model? Sure. Oh, I mean, I'll, I'll give it my best go of uh, there you go. trying to explain uh, blockchain simply. But the... Um, you know, blockchain is, is ultimately uh, a, what they call a distributed ledger or a series of distributed databases where the, the records are not hold, held in any single uh, location uh, and therefore uh, because they are, are stored concurrently on different servers means that you can't just change data in one place. Mm. But what that ultimately um, brings with it is a greater level of trust and security in the initial data that has been stored in said database or, or collections of, of database, such as you know, a financial record, or in the case of Verimark, someone's digital verified employment history uh, or, or academic history that no longer, therefore, you know, people have an incentive to tamper with or improve or change. Um, but actually now, because it's already been checked and checked once by you know, a very valid third party, you know, it can be stored securely there. And whoever then is the recipient of that uh, credential or, or you know, access to that data point can know that it hasn't again been tampered with. Right? And that, that's, that's sort of the, um, you know, the, the underlying advantage of, of blockchain across all use cases, whether it's financial services or employment or uh, such, is that there is this strong element of, of trust and uh, tamper-proof or immutability or uneditable uh, miss to, to the records, right? And, and that's, that's the key element that Verimark is, is harnessing in, in how we are then uh, able to, you know, to store the data. Uh, and then because the data uh, you know, is tamper-proof, you know, it means, and also it, it is not owned just in, in Verimark's own, own you know, AWS server, it means that we can then give access to that, you know, or, should say ownership of that data back to the candidate themselves, mm -hmm. right? So all of those points that you were talking about, uh, or you know, uh, the, the speed and efficiency of trying to get people placed, right? the, you know, it, it's inefficient for the client who's waiting for the candidate to start or contract to start their role, right? And it's inefficient and inconvenient for the recruiter who wants to get this place that person started and is losing billable days every time they're, they're waiting. And it's, you know, it's inconvenient for the candidate as well, who is having to repeat proving that they went to college in 1994 for the 18th time <laughs> in their career, right? Uh, and they've got to wait 12 days for that. And you know, it costs everyone money. Mm -hmm. um, so I would mean, the, you know, the, you know, the reality that Verimark is building is that now actually the candidate will own and does own their own digital credential that they did graduate in 1994 as long as as well with any other data points that Verimark has checked, they can share those with you know, either the recruiter or the end hiring manager and ultimately eliminate all those repetitive checks that would have otherwise slowed down the, the process. Again, because the, of the way the information is stored, as I say, the end recipient being the, the end employer or the, the, you know, the, the, co the recruit agency can, can again be, you know, trust that those data, those data points are, remain valid and haven't been tampered with by the candidate for their own benefit. Uh, mm -hmm. So just cut, you know, what used to take 12 days can now take 12 seconds. Uh, mm -hmm. And obviously that just you know, makes everyone's life a little bit easier. And if you're a recruitment agency able to bring that advantage or an employer able to bring that advantage and give that gift of data back to your candidate, then that's something that we think all of the market, uh, you know, will value. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think of it uh, almost like what we've had to go through with COVID and, and prove that people are vaccinated so that we can travel more efficiently and attend maybe shows more efficiently by having that digital pass that showcases a vaccination record. Similar concept, uh, it feels like. Uh, oh, very similar. Process. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, uh, in, in fact, I mean, you know, obviously no wish for COVID, right, as, as, or as, as the global pandemic, but as a, as a catalyst to the understanding and, and uh, recognition of what the useful parts of a what a digital credential could be, uh, whether it's stored on the, on the blockchain or, or, or not, um, you know, that is to have massively accelerated. You know, everyone, as you say, has got a COVID pass, right, or a, a, yeah. a certificate now that they use in a digital format, uh, and therefore people are no longer uh, are recognising that this is a really viable means of, of getting access to proven and valid data. Yeah, absolutely. Right. It's, it's certainly been a, you know, a boost to the awareness of, of this sort of, uh, uh, you know, the proof of verification. Yeah, absolutely. A conceptual adaptation that we've had to pivot through uh, in that process. And interesting to see that you guys have built that similar sort of technology with background checks. It's really an elemental part of a future of work. Uh, and if we're thinking about it from a foundational perspective, one of the more important concepts of future of work strategies really lies around a globalized workforce, right? So we have companies here in America right now that are tapping into pools of Latin American talent, uh, you know, APAC talent, uh, you know, all over the globe at the touch of a fingertip. They're on a Zoom, just like we are today. And then they're looking to hire the candidate next Monday um, and really knowing if they are number one, uh, maintaining and adhering to compliant practices for background checks within that particular locality and number two, conveniently accessing that information to know that the person that they're bringing on board is truly a vetted and, and checked background um, that they can feel confidence and assured in. Can you speak to a little bit more of how you guys have established somewhat of a globalized infrastructure into your practices so that anyone can hire anyone with the added assurance that you're running through the proper background for their locality? Yeah, absolutely. And I think, I mean, it's, it's that, that in you know, half of that phrase that you just mentioned is that anyone can hire anyone, right? Yeah. And how do you make that possible for the world? And, you know, both you know, obviously for the benefit of the employers, but also just the, the vast array of talent that can now finally be employed and, and, and you know, economically uplifted through access to, uh, to better jobs. Uh, and then, you know, there is, you know, if we look at the, the macro trends of, of, you know, the well, the world of work and the future, future staffing, right? But people are changing jobs faster, right? The, the, the tenure of the average career, the rise in independent working or gig working is, is massively growing. The, right. you know, there is a massive boost in virtual and remote hiring, right? So that's not to say, well, you know, it's, it's international, but, you know, I, you can have people hiring at different ends of the country uh, who, who will never meet each other. Uh, and now, obviously, you've got this this equally massive boost in in cross border hiring, where, as you say, someone in you know California may be hiring someone in Honduras and so forth, and they'll never meet. But uh, you know, uh, there's this complexity as the hiring agency or as the, the employer to know that one. How do you know this person is really who they say they are in Honduras, right? Uh, right. Or, or again, you know, in India or Vietnam or you know or or Boston? Right? How do you know who they are who they say they are really? How do you know if you're a average organization, what questions you can ask about Indian employment or, uh, or criminal records in Vietnam or you know, credit checks in Japan, right? I mean, you just don't have that within your HR you know, wheelhouse, if you will. Uh, and then again, if you're uh, from the candidate side, again, it's, it's, it's that ever growing mobility of these independent professionals, right? the digital nomad who has now moved from you know, one place to one place. And therefore you have this you know, this, this multi-country necessity or the ability to check in multi-countries where people, you know, I'm, I'm obviously British, I live in Singapore, I've worked in the States and France and Spain, right? I mean, that's, that's wow. a, a, a certain amount of you know, complexity to try and check my backgrounds again and know what you're able to do. Point being that actually Veramark acts as a global single point solution. Uh, we are able to deliver uh, 40 plus checks in over 150 countries, um, you know, much like payroll, each, each country has its own different set of regulations and, and rules. And within our platform, you can see very clearly what the platform will tell you what you can and can't answer uh, in certain countries. So that again, 
you know, whether you're a small 10 man uh, operation, you can click in, you open an account, you can you know, ensure that you are completely compliant about the types of checks that you're doing. And, and that the candidate will then equally be uh, only asked to provide that information which they are you know, required to and you won't get any superfluous uh, data, but also the data of the candidate will be handled in uh, in line with local data compliance acts, right? Whether it's GDPR in Europe or PDPA in Asia and so forth. So, you know, from a, a de-risking of your own compliance issues, you're now much safer and you can better adhere to local employment laws, as well as know that you can now anywhere in the world hire whoever you want and get that extra level of certainty around have they done what they've said they are? Who are they? You know, is there any bad? You know, is there anything nefarious in their past that could just you know be impactful to my company culture or my working environment or get me in trouble with any sort of regulated bodies? And it's, it's the elimination of that risk that really sits at the heart of what, what you know everything that Veramont does. Yeah, certainly a critical element of the future of work and a globalized workforce. Right at the brunt of that is uh, compliant practices and ensuring that you uh, are are adhering to the necessary uh, legislations and statutory obligations for an employer to run background information. Um, and I don't know if that's ever spoken enough of. Uh, we often hear about you know, how convenient it is and how easy it is, but truly are we taking the time and the forthright effort to ensure that we're obligating our fulfillment in, in compliant practices. It is the big man, the big boogeyman in the room, but very important aspect of what we do. Um, now, <clears throat> I'd, I'd like to talk through the online business community, and I'm, I'm kind of going in through a different uh, path now uh, on this show, um, in which, you know, your entrepreneurial background has really uh, created this community uh, where other businesses and like-minded entrepreneurial uh, owners and, and, and uh you know, adventurers, I guess you could say, um, are able to find some added support in this process. Can you speak through uh, this organization a little bit further? Sure, yeah. So, um, uh, as I mentioned, you know, Veramont was, was my, uh, is, is my second business, my first business. You know, we, we built and scaled, raised about $15 million for, it's still running a decade later. Uh, you know, my role at ADECO, I got to view, view sort of 2,000 plus HR tech businesses and then so forth. But um, what we built, the, the entity that you're talking about is called the Workplace Accelerator. Uh, and we set it up in 2020, just in, in response to really COVID actually. So you had this, uh, uh, you know, HR tech wasn't so loved, you know, pre-pandemic. It, it was definitely not a, as, as excited or exciting to, to the venture capital community. Uh, and actually it was a pretty... Uh, under 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 thought of category of, of businesses, right? I mean, it's, it's pre you know, pre my race pays big raise or remote or oyster and all those sort of businesses in that sort of space becoming all unicorns and shedding some light on it. But what what happened was, you know, obviously in, in early 2020 there was this massive forced transformation of work, uh, and in Southeast Asia and APAC where uh, I was based, as I said HR tech was sort of this. Uh, uh, beginners category uh, and there wasn't much support or ecosystem for it and actually a lot of the, even the, the HR tech buyers you know or the HR directors or talent acquisition directors weren't overly familiar with all the immediate benefits that HR tech could bring they, they thought it was a, as a cost center as opposed to you know being transformative to the way your business runs and the efficiency it can get um, so we decided to build uh, what was then the, the the first dedicated HR tech growth and accelerator program. Uh, and we structured a 16 week program uh, that now in his second year, is just entering his third year, has uh, comes with not only um, 10 very senior operating partners uh, who are all proven HR tech experts, you know, functionally uh, or entrepreneurs who build and scale their businesses, but actually also now about 300 global uh, HR leaders who act as mentors to the program. Uh, and you know, what we do is, you know, once a year, we take a cohort of you know, seven businesses who all work across the, the work tech uh, categories. So talent acquisition, talent management, you know, core HR, uh, productivity and collaboration is a big one, obviously, now with the rise of remote work uh, and workforce management. 
Uh, and then these seven, you know, the, these seven businesses, you know, last year we had 240 businesses apply, we got seven of them in. And then they go through this program and get to meet, you know, all of the mentors that they needed to and you know, get feedback on all of their businesses. These are all early stage businesses, sort of sub 10 grand a month type style. So really quite early on in the journey. Um, but what it does do them is it gives them massive exposure to, to real market feedback. So obviously they can refine their idea about what the market wants. And then the market equally gets to then tell them what they want to see in the product. So ultimately, the, the end vision is that everyone gets, gets the tools and, and the insight that they need to build a better working world. Uh, and then the program typically runs about 16 weeks uh, in total to, um, as I say, really you know, bring young fledgling entrepreneurs in, in what is, a, is, is a still sort of underinvested in category. Um, you know, further along the journey and make, you know, hopefully make it a little bit easier for them to get to that next step. Yeah. So if I'm an entrepreneur, right, and I want to be part of the workforce uh, excel oh, workplace God. accelerator program, is there a certain vetting process that would accept me into the six week, 16 week training program? Is there a cost associated with it? How does that process work? Yeah, so there is a, so you would have, you'd go to uh, workplaceaccelerator.com uh, and you would apply. Uh, then there's uh, three series of interviews, you know, typically uh, one, you know, a chat with me or the, the other person who runs the program, um, one of the operating partners, uh, and then also one of the, 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 the global mentors who would, you know, who is, is a sort of domain specialist in, in your, your preferred category. Uh, and then we get everyone to do a personality test uh, at the end to make sure that uh, the, the founding team will, will have one um, and that uh, they, uh, you know, that they are uh, of, a, of a suitable collaborative nature to right. really help the other six businesses that will be in the cohort as well as look after themselves, which is sort of really important right. to us. Uh, and then at the end of that, then, you know, as I say, we will typically, select, uh, out of however many applications, we'll, we'll select the top seven, but uh, there's no cash cost to it. And then uh, as they will, we'll, the businesses get invested in through an angel network of this 250 plus, you know, 300 plus mentors now um, that we've you know, built as well. Uh, and then obviously there's, there's an equity fee around that. Nice, nice. Very cool uh, concept that you guys have drawn out. Now, um, if, if you could maybe rewind a little bit and, and talk to Dan before the entrepreneurial bug bit you and, and give yourself advice on, hey, these are the things that I've learned along the way that you should be aware of as I'm raising capital, or perhaps that listener that's tuning into today's episode that's considering taking that leap of faith. What advice would you give them? Um, certainly you, you have uh, done a fantastic job and you're very familiar on, on what it takes to raise funds, to build businesses. Any advice that you would give the listeners out there or yourself maybe, even if you could, uh, when it comes to that? Uh, so, I mean, I, I think that there's a, there's a, a couple of, I mean, on, on, the, on the building business part side of things, I think the, uh, the simplest advice is, is just get started and uh, and then just keep going. Uh, it is, as you know, you know, I'm sure even, even better than me. It is it is it is incredibly hard work to build a business. Uh, but until you take that first step, you know, it's it's it's, it's all you know, obviously hypothetical. And but you know, yeah. you'll find naturally once you do take that first step, the second quickly follows the third, uh, and you get into a pattern of it, right? But uh, right. You know, there's nothing like just getting stuck in and you know whether it's uh in, like with all things in life you you know you just gotta gotta keep going uh if you're going to get anywhere and that you know if you don't have or you don't feel that you're going to have that you know realize that again things will take twice as long as they always seem to uh so if you're not committed to uh, you know at least putting sort of a, a guaranteed minimum of 12 months of hard sweat and energy into it uh, before you see the the signs of any fruit of labor then you know really consider if that's the the right thing for you but the sooner you can take that first step then you know then ultimately the better it will be um, on the on the fundraising side I think there's you know it's re equally realizing that uh, it, it is a numbers game I mean it is a law of numbers it is a sales process uh, someone used the the analogy the other day that I actually I thought was really apt that you know, raising investment is, is kind of like being an actor in, the, in going for additions in, in the fact that, you know, unless you really look like Brad Pitt, you're probably going to hear a lot of no's 
before you hear your one yes, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and therefore, you just have to treat the fundraising process as a continual sales event, much like you would with clients. You know, some will buy, some won't. Don't worry about the ones that don't. Just keep looking for the ones that will. And again, you know, sort of ties back into the, uh, you know, into the persistence and resilience piece that you know you've just got to uh, keep going. Uh, and I think anyone starting out or they, the world is so flooded with with stories around you know, young people raising hundreds and you know hundreds of million dollars over the weekend and so forth. When actually the reality is obviously very different from that. Yeah. Uh, so realize that you know whatever you can do and whatever you can raise is a real achievement in itself and, and be proud of that. Um, but you know e even even then you're still going to hear more no's than you hear yeses in, in most cases and, and just realize that's part of the game. Yeah, that. Uh that value that valuable and uh without a doubt uh, level of rejection will be there but uh if for anything that's worth it in life that's usually the way it goes um so yeah. some great some great advice that you've given and i go back to myself uh when it comes to just taking that leap of faith and and having the full self confidence that this is going to be sure as hell a really long road of hard work ahead but it begins with one single step um, and how hard that was for me uh, in my own personal journey through this. So thank you for that. Some good feedback. And it's great to, I, it's honestly refreshing to hear. Um, you, you guys have done something really cool at the Workplace Accelerator. And aside from giving entrepreneurs uh, or hopeful entrepreneurs this training and this methodology through that 16 week program and potentially the leveraging of angel investors into their own business, there's also the value of mentorship um, that you guys are building through this, which in some cases is, is invaluable, right? You, you can't really put a price on, um, on learning through others and, and especially those that have been through this. Can you talk through what mentorship has done for you personally um, and where it's led you to where you are in the career and why you guys wanted to really embed that into this program? Yeah, I think there's, uh, I mean, it's, it's obviously very incorrectly, it's a really undervalued um, yeah. gift. Right. I think uh, or often under uh, you know, appreciated gift, you just don't realize the, the real impact and value that mentorship or, or coaching uh, can have on a person. As you say, I mean, there's, there's nothing like uh, avoiding someone else's mistakes right? and, and, and right. that sort of uh, Surely. And, and that sort of uh, that foresight and pre-proven experience, you know, at the beginning, you know, can, can save young businesses as well as you know, young adults or, or anyone in life. You know, a huge amount of time and pain and angst and so forth. Um, you know, and uh, what we made, what we wanted to do in the workplace accelerator, and as well as how we you know, use mentors and coaches in, in Veramark for our own leadership team, is really make sure that it was hyper focused on HR tech uh, and make sure that again these are not, you know, as, as some other programs do, you know, bring you know bring obviously highly accomplished people, but who aren't necessarily you know domain experts in that world. Uh, I think that sort of level of hyper-focused uh, insight and you know, proven track record is you know, something that really stands out and, and differentiates the program in that everything compounds on each other, whether it's about HR tech sales or HR tech partnerships or HR tech integrations or HR tech marketing or HR you know, product roadmaps and so forth. Everything you know, is really baked in this sort of niche uh, domain area, which again, just you know, makes it even more relevant for the people. Right. Um, for me personally, I, you know, I mean, you know, as a, as, a, as a younger man, I, I probably wouldn't have uh, been a valued mentor much or, or thought I was too busy to be mentored, right? Because I was, you know, running around doing, doing the world. But actually, you know, uh, you know it's, that's definitely a mistake in itself. And now the, the ability to take a step back and have a conversation with someone who's, who's wiser or, you know, as I say, more experienced or is actually just willing to take the time and listen to, to you, talk you through your own uh, business concerns is, is hugely, hugely valuable. You know, very, you know, very much is, is, is now sort of again. Um, it, it, we recently raised sort of an eight and a half million pound equity round as well. Congratulations! And, uh, thank you. And then uh, you know we we are, we are a coach and mentor for that process, not on the fundraising side, but just again, just just a general CEO coach that you could lean on and and you know, check in with once in a while to as I say sort of relieve some of the stress and just make sure that you're you know you're not going off track in, in many ways and 
and that, that's hugely both cathartic but also reassuring process uh you know i found and you, and you definitely you know, recommend it to to anyone and it doesn't have to be a professional sometimes it is just a good friend who's willing to uh, to listen and you know uh and not always give you the answers but just let you talk through your own uh responses yeah and and uh one of the things that i've discovered more recently uh i think it, as as you're learning to build teams and draw from people around you that are certainly more expert than you could ever be is knowing that mentorship doesn't necessarily have to be the person that's more experienced. It could be the younger person that knows a certain technology, a certain skill set, or certain subject matter expertise that you have no idea about, and you're learning and you're drawing from uh, their own experiences and how they've leveraged uh, their their domain, and and uh, and knowing that mentorship truly is all around us, and you just have to have the willingness to never stop learning through others. Um, so. Uh, thank you for sharing that. I, I am a, I'm a proponent of it as well. And, and as we're wrapping up today's podcast, uh, Dan, I'd, I'd love to get an idea. Uh, knowing that this is the information age and it, it is so critical for us to maintain, as we do sometimes in our regular life, uh, uh, a healthy lifestyle. We have to do it on the mental uh, state of things with our content and what we decide to consume every single day to stay up to date. Uh, so what are some resources for learning, um, maybe news outlets or things that you read uh, in leisure to stay up to date and to just keep the mental health going in, in uh, the world of Daniel? Yes, I have a, I have a sort of a, two great loves, uh, plus my wife. Uh, in, in, in my life. <laughs> Three great loves. Uh, yeah, Shout out to the me. wife. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, one being very mark, obviously, and then the other is we have a 20 month old son at the moment. Uh, oh, so yeah. uh, most of my reading is or most of my news sources either on how to continue growing and scaling you know, in a, a hyper growth business. Uh, and for that, I find the resources at Sastra, Sastra University, uh, you know, uh, really useful for businesses of all size, whether you're zero to, to working out how to get to your first 10 customers or, or go from, you know, 10 to, to 100 million. Uh, and that those are, you know, that's, that's a fantastic business resource. And then, you know, the rest is our, a sort of collection of parental blogs on, on trying to work out how to, how to potty train someone at the moment, which is, uh, uh, you know. Navigating the chaos. Yeah, to, yeah how, to, how to maintain sanity. Uh, <laughs> right. But, uh, you, know, but, you know, that's certainly the greatest uh, harmonizer, I'd say, in my, in my life currently at the moment to, to make you realize what it's all for at the back of the end, at the end of the day. Yeah, to go back to your why, without a doubt. That's awesome. That's awesome. Okay, cool. So, uh, where can we find you? Where can we get in touch with you? Sure. Well, uh, as a, as per my name, uh, tag conveniently, I see at the bottom of the the screen. You, you know, anyone can either reach me on LinkedIn under Daniel Callahan, or uh, my email address is dan at veramark.com. And you know, and Ray, we'd love to hear from anyone. Uh, certainly interested in about improving how their candidates are having their background or pre-employment screening or, or reach out to, to, you know, on any other topic that might be of interest. Yep, absolutely. Uh, congratulations to, to all the happenings in your life, uh, Dan, especially with their mark, the 20 month old as well, uh, this new voyage into the new business. I think your son is probably the same around the same age as, as the business, if I'm not mistaken. Or yeah, but a uh, little younger, but yeah, it was a, a little younger. If, you, yeah. if you're taking the pregnancy, then yeah, about the same time. Uh, there you go. There you go. Well, um, all wonderful things. And, uh, you know, selfishly, I look forward to the day that our platform as well has the opportunity to utilize Veramark. I know soon that day will come and, and definitely you guys give it, uh, check it out. Uh, they're, they're really leveraging some fantastic things when it comes to the world of background and pre-screening. Uh, Dan, so nice to have you on the show today. Uh, thank you for spending some time for us. Thank you to our audience for tuning in as well. Uh, I always say this, I wrap up with one uh, firm belief, and that is that time is the most valuable gift that we can give to one another. So we appreciate you guys and you as well, Dan, for spending some time with us. No, thank you very much for having me. It's been great. Absolutely. We'll see you guys on the next episode of the Ivy Podcast.